Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Strip Apple Pineapple. Now we get a lot of requests for the pineapple quilt. And this is a variation of that pattern. But I really like how it's got sashing in the middle and these blocks are a little bit easier to make. Now they're made from the strip club patterns. These are from Cozy Quilt Designs. And that means we get to use jelly roll strips. So I'm going to use this colorful batik one from Robert Kaufman called Sunrise Vista. And then all we need to add is a background. And we'll pick out these little sashing fabrics when we get all the patchwork done. I really like the Cozy Quilt Design patterns because not only are they easy to follow, there's multiple sizes included in the same pattern. I'm gonna make the throw size today. This is gonna take 36 jelly roll strips, and that's nice because of the roll I have here, it's got 40 strips. Then we're gonna need two and a quarter yards of the background, and then we're gonna need some other fabrics for the sashing and the borders, but we will cut those and talk about those amounts as we get to them when we're making the quilt. The first thing we wanna do is open up the jelly roll, and we're going to subcut all of these strips. Now I can't give you all the sizes that we're gonna subcut them into because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt's patterns are always very easy to follow. So I'm just going to open that up, open all these up and cut them to size. Everything is all cut up, and I went ahead and cut the background pieces as well. So I've pulled off everything I need for one block, because this quilt is made block at a time. The first thing we need to do is mark the back of the background squares. So since my background is dark, I'm going to use this white chalk pencil here, and I'm going to mark right along the diagonal. So I'm going to put my ruler from corner to corner make a line. Now on these big squares, I want to make another line a half inch away. So you can move this over and put your half inch line on your ruler on the line you already made and draw it. Or if you've got one of these little half inch guys, these are quicker to move. You have to hold it firmly down so it doesn't slide, but I can make one line and then move it over and make another. Now on the small square, we only need to make one line right down the middle. Now I've got everything for the one block here at the sewing machine. And I'm going to take the small square of the background and the small square of the print, and I'm going to put them right sides together. And then I'm going to stitch right along the line or just to this side of it, just over to the right of it, a teeny bit. Now, the reason we are stitching just to the right of that line is because we are going to fold this open and we want these corners to meet. So that's how you can tell if you did it correctly. If everything is lined up here, when you open it up, you know you have stitched correctly there. So we need to take this over to the ironing board now. So I'm going to press this nice and flat with a little bit of steam. Now I'm going to open it back up and I want to trim off these bottom two layers, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm back at the machine and ready to add the next two pieces. We've got one that goes there and one that goes here. So let's stitch this first, line everything up, And I'm just going to finger press this seam allowance. I'm going to press the seams toward the color, away from the background. Goes right back there. Now we'll put those together, and they're exactly the same length now, so we'll just line everything up. And again, we are going to finger press the seam allowance toward the color and away from the background. Now we're gonna take one of these bigger background prints and we're gonna put that line that's on the diagonal facing or parallel to this line here. And the line that's closer towards the corner is gonna be farther away from this background. So that's 
the orientation. That's where it goes. And again, you want to stitch just to the right of your drawn line. And then we want to stitch on that other line. And now we'll take this over to the ironing board. So again, we are going to fold this open and make sure that everything lines up here. All the raw edges are even. I'm gonna press it. And now we need to trim off again. But this time, we're gonna trim right between those two stitching lines. Now this part is the block we're working on, and this is an extra half square triangle that we're not gonna use in our block. We're going to set it aside and use it later. Now we can add two more pieces to the block. This one's gonna go here, and this one's going to go here. So we're gonna use the same procedure to stitch them on that we did with the first two pieces. We're just going to continue to press the seam toward the print. This goes here, and each piece is going to fit on exactly as we build the block. Now we're simply going to add one more of these squares. Again, the lines are parallel to our other lines. It's going to go in this corner right here. Again, stitching just to the right of that drawn line. Again, open it up. Make sure that everything meets there. And cut between those two lines. head back to the machine. Now we're gonna do the same procedure one last time. Two strips here, and then we'll add that black piece. So every time you add one of these strips, the seams are going to go toward that colorful strip. Now this square goes on exactly the same way the last ones did, parallel to these. Again, open it up, match your edges. Cut right between those two lines. And this is one quarter of the block we're going to be making. So this is going to go four different directions with some sashing in the middle to make up our whole block. So I'm going to keep making those blocks and I'm going to keep putting these half square triangles aside because we're going to get three of these from each block we make. So we're going to build up quite a few of those. I've got all of the blocks all stitched up here. And the next step is to pick out a fabric to be used for this sashing in here and this sashing, which also ends up as a border. Now these are pretty colorful, so I could have gone with any color. So I've pulled out some options here and I think I'm gonna go with these almost solid batiks because these have so much print in them and that sashing is pretty darn little. So I think a print might look too busy. Now, I love aqua, I love purple, and I think these two look better than the green, which is a little bit yellow for me. So I'm gonna go with those two colors, and then we're gonna have a little teeny border of the black right there. Then we just need one border for the outside. So I've pulled out some bolts over here. And again, any color, any of these prints would work, but since I'm going with the aqua tones, I'm gonna use this one. Now all we have to do 
is take four of these patchwork blocks. We're gonna put that little triangle part in the middle. Then we're gonna take one of these cornerstones that we cut earlier and four sashing pieces and we'll stitch all of this up into a bigger block. Now the one thing you might want to do is lay out some of your blocks ahead of time so that you can make sure you have a nice mix of colors. I might not want these two in the same big block because they both have green there. I might want to pick something like this so that my block is a little bit more colorful. I'm not going to be too picky, I just want to have a nice balance for each block. So to make this big block, all we're going to do is stitch this into a row, make that little skinny row, and make this last row, and then stitch all the rows together. There, I've got all three rows done, and I am going to finger press the seam allowances toward the sashing. So they're going this way here, they're going away from the center, and they're going back towards the center. That way, when I stitch these rows together, these seam allowances will be going in different directions, and they will nest, and it'll be real easy to match up the intersections. I've got all these blocks put together, and now we're gonna do the same thing with the second sashing. So we'll get these spread out on the table. And you know, they're so colorful, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. And I've got nine blocks here, but between the blocks, we're gonna put one more little cornerstone and then this second sashing color is going to go between the blocks. And then this is the same fabric that's on our first border that goes around. Then we're gonna add a little black border. And then there's going to be a small black border that goes all the way around. And then a printed border that goes around. So I'm gonna put all this together and get it onto the quilting machine. I've got all the borders on the quilt. I've got it on the machine. And now I need to pick a thread color. There's a lot of colors that would look really good on here. And the uh, turquoise here, let's peel a little bit off. This would be good because it, it's gonna coordinate and it's not gonna show up too much on that black. Same thing with this lavender. It's kind of a dark lavender, but it's not really gonna show much there or there. Also doesn't show much on the black. The teal would have been my first choice because it matches the borders so well, but it actually is a little bit too stark on there. I think that I will go with the lavender. For the quilting pattern, I'm gonna use one called Botanical Blossoms because the batiks in the quilt look kind of tropical to me. And this has got some flowers, big ones, ones inside it, these little guys. And I think that's gonna look really good on the quilt. Now, while that's quilting, remember all those half square triangles that we got when we were making the patchwork? Let's work on these now. Now the pattern doesn't give us a specific place to use these in the quilt. These are just a side effect from cutting our patchwork blocks. We got three of these from every block that we made. So there's quite a few of them. I have 108 with the size quilt I'm doing. Now, a lot of patchwork blocks that you make, you have a little bit of waste that you cut off, but these aren't waste at all. These are a nice block that we can use to make something else. So here's some options for what we can use these blocks for. You can lay them out for a throw pillow. And I just got this pattern by spinning and turning them around. You could lay a whole lot of them in a long row 
and make a patchwork border. You could add that to your quilt, either on the top and bottom, or maybe even on the back. Here's another layout. I just, again, twisted and turned the blocks. I repeated this over and over. So there's lots of options for these half square triangles. So I'm gonna mess around with them a little bit and see what I come up with. Here's the finished quilt. This was just a lot of fun to make and I love all the different things that are going on. You see those squares getting bigger and bigger. I like the sashing. The little cornerstones really enhance the patchwork. It doesn't take much longer to put in the sashing and cornerstones, but it really makes it look good. Also, it's got little tiny borders around the outside. Again, it seems like it's taking a long time to add a teeny little bit, but it really makes the quilt look so good. Now the back, I used a watercolor batik and a contrast color thread so you can see those nice big flowers on the back side. That looks really good. It's 65 by 65 inches square. It's a nice size and again the pattern has four different sizes. Now here's the pillows that I made to match. They just look awesome with it. They're very colorful. These are really fun to make. They're 18 inches. I just put an envelope back here and then we've got just a pillow form that you can buy at a craft store inside there. Now I made three pillow tops. This is the third one. I'm not really sure what happened. I was interrupted several times when I was making this. I'm not even sure where I went wrong because I've got a lot of areas that are not sewn correctly. So I can either leave this as an abstract pillow or I can go ahead and fix up all the corners so they look like this one, which is what I was going for to begin with. Thanks so much for watching our tutorial today on the Strip Apple Pineapple Quilt. We hope you like it. Now, we're going to have another giveaway. This is a quilt called Daydreamy. It's all done with pretty Riley Blake floral prints, and it's very easy to enter our giveaways. All you have to do is click the link below the video that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name, and you could win a quilt. Now, if you like our tutorials and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.